recording of this. And I am going to my presentation. And uh, whoops, hopefully you see it on the screen, yes? Yep. Cool. All right, we're recording Opportunity in Uncertainty. And this is our weekly mo mo Money Mojo Masterclass, our mini mini money mojo masterclass because what we're going to share with you towards the end of the presentation is really really super cool uh we decided dan and i decided this week to do an intensive a complimentary intensive master class for those of you who are super interested in learning more about options it's all learning no pitching so it's going to be a roll up your sleeves uh day where you will emerge confident uh, as it relates to how you can use options to maximize your long-term investments while bringing in a consistent income. You excited about that, Dan? Yeah, I am. Uh, you know, we're going to reveal, pull back the, the curtain a little bit and show a lot of the strategies that, you know, I myself do. Um, on a weekly basis now are you going to understand every aspect of everything about options in a day no but you will have some really good nuggets and takeaways um, from that day uh, i think it's, it's going to be the foundation that you can uh efficiently and elegantly build on that's going to allow you to start taking some simulated trades and Britt, do you want to just share with everybody the simulated trade that you took as a new student of all of this and what what you've seen in terms of your return sure um last week after our call on wednesday the same call i decided to go in and purchase zoom um on through my simulated trading account and I didn't quite know what I was doing, but I only put in $1,600 and I kind of went at it as a way to say, well, let's just see how much money I can make. And I forgot about it. I didn't really look at it because I didn't really know quite where to look. And then when I looked at it Monday morning, it was at $2,000. And then when I looked at it today, it's at $4,500. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of fun to watch it go up. And with the tools that I learned from... So $4,500 yeah. and how much did you tie up? Like how much did those uh, calls cost you? I think it was 1623. I thought 1623. I can go ahead and lose that. Right. If I, I mean, you know, on the simulated trade, I don't want to lose it in real time, but who does? And um, anyway, I'm up 45, 37 right now uh, in a week. So is that, what is that a 300% increase Dan? Yeah. Give or take right, right around there. <laughs> it's a nice little, Happy That's a little nugget. Color, yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's all, all thanks to you guys teaching me about this. In two weeks, I've I've been with you guys. I think two weeks. So, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, and it's just a matter of just doing it. Because here's the thing: there's a shift coming in every day. A lot of people feel, oh my gosh, I missed out on buying the low. You know. A, a week and a half ago, right when the Dow was at 19,000, and we saw this big week uh, last week. Oh my goodness, I missed out on Tesla. You know, Tesla's been up 60% this week. And I think the message is, and Dan and I preach this every day the ship, there's a ship coming in every day. You didn't miss the ship, there's a ship coming in every day, right? Whether the markets are up, down, there's always opportunity. So before we get started, just to make it clear, I am not a financially, you know, a, a, a licensed financial professional. Neither is Dan. Correct, Dan? Correct. You want to not, go not anymore. Those are long. Those days are long gone. And it's not fun to be one of those because you, you know your your hands are tied in terms of the the knowledge that you can put out there that that actually is knowledge that most financial advisors aren't even aware of, right? So most of them just understand how to sell what their companies want them to sell. And uh, don't get us started on mutual funds because you know we'll, we'll, we'll rant for like an hour and a half on that. <laughs> uh, they're, they're the suckers bet. So what we want for you to understand is that yes, there is uh, 
the, the markets are risky, but with that said, when you get an education around all of this and you understand options, you're going to declare your maximum loss and you're going to analyze your opportunity you know, through the tools that we show you. So before you do anything, we absolutely preach that you open up a paper account like what Britt shared with you all and you get confident and you understand risk management before you risk dollar one of your money. With me on that, Dan? You need to know three things before you go into every trade. How much it ties up in the trade, how much you're willing to lose, how much your profit target is. That yes. Those three things, you should not ever enter any position. Yes. Even in a 401k. Yes. You should know with every investment you make where you know there's support and where there's resistance. And we're going to talk to you about this. And we're going to introduce you to the Bonacci retracement. And we're going to show you today what that actually means and how that looks on a chart and how that informs us of the decisions that we make around our investing and trading. So I mentioned this last week and I also read an article today from, uh, from a, a big time advisor that, that carried the same energy. We are living in uncertain times right now. The markets are swinging like crazy. You know, we were up 550 yesterday on the Dow. Today we're down 640 as, as I'm speaking to you. Okay, the VIX is now above 42. You know, yesterday we were headed into the 30s. So we're, we're swinging one way, we're swinging another way. So there's movement and what we say is there's money in the movement. So if you, um, are with us and um, you've been kind of leaning into what we've been talking about here, which is be an assassin, hit and run, profit from the volatility. You know, Brit profited from Zoom going down to below. I, prob you, I believe you probably bought those calls when um, Zoom was at, at about 120. And now, you know, Zoom, Zoom is um, at 150. So, you know, you probably bought that, that in the, uh, you know, that barely out of the money call uh, just above 120. And now she, she could buy Zoom at 120 when the market price of Zoom is 150. So the, the call value, you, you know, the value of those calls went up. So this is what we're showing you all. Be intentional. And I want to, I want to be La Femme Nikita in this time when we're an assassin for profits. So my topic that I'm going to introduce today, and just for you, for those of you who are tapping into us for the first time, I, Dan and I are a team. Look at me as the I'm you <laughs> portion of this team because I learned everything that I know about options, uh, my foundation from Dan. I'm mentored with him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and I started this a couple of years ago and I just, we got you know the confidence to do all of this and in this market specifically which is the optimal market for options i've been sharpening my skills every single day so when you listen to me speak i want for you to say like oh i'm just like her i'm reading the same book as you i'm just a few chapters ahead of you that's all so like brid said if she could do it if i could do it we haven't worked on wall street you know, we're not financial people. We just have a passion about creating an additional um, cash flow stream that's consistent. And I like money. <laughs> Do you like money, Britt? Who, who doesn't? Yes. Yes. Let's say it out loud, the three of us. We love money. <laughs> we, love we love money. Money allows us to help other people. Money allows us to live life on our terms. So, be selfish, you know, feel good about being selfish. And especially in this time, because when everybody else who doesn't understand how the financial markets work are suffering because their portfolios are down 20, 30%, let us be the smart ones in our families. Let us be the smart ones in our uh, friend groups who understand this so we can help them, right? We can allow them to shift their perspective. We can allow them to reframe their game as it relates to whether they feel like a victim right now or whether they feel empowered 
right? To be an assassin in these markets and take profits and protect their portfolios. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> okay, here's something that um, I want for you all to look at that, that I uh, started doing because one of the things that happened for me when uh, February went, went down was a lot of my stop losses were hit and very, very, uh, in a wonderful way, I'm in a lot of cash, right? Is it good to be in cash right now? Yeah, better than being long equity. Better than being long equity or long, you know, mutual funds, right? That are ping ponging all over the place. So I'm in cash. And we hear a lot of people ask, uh, and we see this online, is it, is it the bottom? Should I be buying now? Right? Is it the bottom? Should I be buying now? And I like, I want to reframe the way you look at this from questioning whether you should be buying now to be where I should be buying. So the question should be not a time and a day question, but a level question. And what question. So there are bargains out there that I'm keeping my eye on. And again, this is what I'm doing. I'm not suggesting that you do it. But companies like Carnival Cruise Line, right, are at all time lows. Previously, these have been uh, strong performing positions. Uh, I remember in my portfolio when I was with a broker, Carnival was was a was a strong performing position and many, many brokers have this in their clients' portfolios. We're in a time right now where we're anticipating bailouts, uh, aid to industries that got hit hardest. Dan, uh, Marriott went up like a rocket yesterday. Okay. So the key with this strategy is to look for lower priced stocks with volume. The reason why this doesn't work with, uh, I don't know, a Tesla at 700 plus a share right now, or others is uh, we're, we're talking about benefiting from, from uh, selling puts, which are, uh, which are uh, contracts uh, that are below the level that the stock is at today and, uh, and, and acquiring the underlying when price comes to that level. And it would be a pretty pro pricey proposition with this particular strategy. Anything you wanna to add to that, Dan, as to why we wanna look at a lower price? Did I articulate that properly? Yeah, think of it, I'll, I'll, yeah, you did, you did a great job. I think that you know the best way to look at this is decide where you would like to buy something at a discount. Yeah, and, and how are you gonna do that? I'm sorry. In, in selling puts you not only are going to potentially get your wish and get to buy it at that discount, but you'll also get a premium for doing that. So it's like, get paid to go shopping on sale. Get paid to go shop. Britt, would you like to get paid to go shopping on sale? Is that yeah. like, this is, a, this is a woman's dream. This is a, <laughs> a, a woman's dream. Not only can I buy things on sale, but I can arrange to get paid to go shopping to buy things on sale and, and just to add <laughs> these are the type these are the type of concepts that we you know we're going to cover in a lot more detail on our on our saturday intensive um you know don't want to spend like a ton of time on our wednesday calls going into like you know how to buy a put how to sell a put you know that, that type of thing but we really want to frame this options intensive as a concept that you know nothing about options at all we'll start from there um, and then we'll have breakouts with more advanced students, right? But but in general, that's that's the frame of mind we had going into that. So Sorry, don't feel intimidated. Ahead. Yeah, don't feel intimidated if you're seeing this and you're saying, I don't know what they're talking about. What's a call? What's a put? What's in the money? What's out of the money? We are going to break that down to understandable, digestible bites. So you walk away from that Saturday with confidence around doing what it is that we're showing you here. So here is a chart, and this chart shows how Carnival Cruise Line, and the symbol for the stock is CCL, 
how Carnival has performed over the past 180 days. Okay, the past 180 days. So we see a high of 51.94. So Carnival was as high, and that was on um, January 13th. Carnival was as high as uh, 51.94, and Carnival hit a low on the 9th of March and the 30th of March. You see that clearly on the diagram. So there, this is, I'm showing you a screen from Think or Swim, which is the platform that we use and suggest that um, our clients learn from. And I drew what's called a, a Fibonacci retracement. And I'm a scientist, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, Fibonacci was introduced to us uh, as, 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 as a scientist during my you know, learning years. And very simply put, there is a natural sequence that he communicated through mathematics. And this natural sequence uh, informs us of how plants you know, uh, represent themselves. It's, it's a pattern that's seen in living beings and it's a pleasing pattern to our eyes. You know, I'm a knitter. There's actually a knitting pattern, a Fibonacci knitting pattern, if you saw like how beautifully the colors blend when um, you use the particular sequence that we're showing you here. So uh, it's no wonder that when I place this Fibonacci sequence on this chart, that you can see where the lines are, that we see consolidation. I mean, look at this 4245 level here at the 78%. Dan, based on what we're seeing here, what would you call that level? Uh, resistance level. A resistance level. That means if price were here, maybe between 29 and 42, there, was a, there would be a high probability, right, for us to see a turn. But what we're showing you here in the chart is areas where there's support and resistance. So price right now, CCL, um, I, I believe it's, it's probably around 12 or 13 at this particular minute. Yesterday, when I took this picture, towards the end of the day, uh, uh, Carnival was at 12.45. So what this is telling me is, it's in the middle here of this seven, dollar uh, in six support level and this 18.06 resistance level. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow, I'd like to shop for, for Carnival and I would be okay with purchasing, with having Carnival in my portfolio at $10 a share. Because what this is showing me is in the pretty much short term, if I look at this, let's say I acquire that I get, um, I get assigned these shares, these 1000 shares of Carnival because I bought 10 contracts, I bought 10 puts, I rather sold 10 put contracts, right? At a strike price of $10. So that's saying I'd be okay with having a thousand shares of Carnival in my portfolio, right? which would set me back a thousand times ten dollars so ten thousand dollars and there's an opportunity for me to make eight thousand dollars in that investment in the short term that's my thinking okay for me to invest ten thousand to make eight thousand on that underlying in the short term while i collected $1,100 in premium to wait for price to get down to that level. And Don, what happens if it never gets there? I just put $1,100 in my pocket and I walk away. So it's, it's like, let's say I go to the store and I keep going to the store and I make, and I want to see if my, my sneakers every week I go to Gucci. <laughs> and I want to see if those sneakers that I want from Gucci are going on sale. And I get paid every week to go shopping. And if they're not on sale, I just say, okay, they're not on sale. And I walk out and the person at the door pays me for visiting Gucci that day. Okay. Pays me. We're getting some great uh, uh, people here on uh, Facebook. 
Uh, somebody just said, thanks for sharing this. I'm definitely coming back to this video and watching it later on. So that's what's wonderful about having our dear Facebook audience with us because they're with us here live and they're commenting and they're also uh, going to be, you know, thousands of people watching this uh, towards, towards uh, the end of the day because, you know, people have busy days. So we're really happy about all of you being here with us. So that's what that chart looks like. This is something we're going to introduce you to because before you decide to take a trade, you're going to analyze. So you're going to go into the risk profile. So here is the risk profile from um, what I was looking at yesterday. And what I see on the chart here, I don't have the numbers uh, because I just took a picture of the chart, but this is something that we're going to show you in class is you see that as long as um, as, as long as Carnival is over $10, right? I collected $1,100 in premium when I sold this. And as we go to expire, if Carnival is over $10 at expiry, that $1,100 goes straight in my pocket. So that's the example we, we talked to you about. You can go shopping for Carnival. If Carnival never goes below $10, then you collected premium, just like Geico collects premium every single month where you pay your car insurance. Dan, exactly. anything you wanna talk about here? Exactly, yeah, only thing to add would be, you know, the reason why if on May 15th, you see the strike uh, date, execution date there, the expiry date there. It's May the expiry 15th. day is on May 16th, yeah. May, May 15th, May 16th. So the reason why you collect, you keep that money if price never goes down below that level is because those puts that you sold are expiring worthless. They're expiring worthless if they do not go below 10 in this case. Now, why are they worthless? Because if the current market price is 11 and you have the option to sell at 10, why would you execute that? You can sell at the current market price of 11. Right. 10. So that, I mean, that, that's a complicated way to say that like, yes, we're just gonna buy things when they're on sale and we're gonna get paid to buy things on sale sometimes. And sometimes we're gonna get paid just to go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we're gonna go into a lot more detail on that. Pay me to go shopping. So where, where do we, um, well, that, this is something that we're going to talk about later, but I'm going to stop my share. So what are, um, what are, what are great stocks that, that fall into the criteria that I'm looking at? Um, we talked about Weight Watchers. Uh, we talked about, uh, and Weight Watchers is, uh, I don't know, $10, $11. So we want to look at stocks. So we, um, if we, sold 10 contracts, right? For $1,100, we're getting paid to go shopping. So let's say I got assigned those, you know, those, those, the underlying, so that would be a thousand shares. I don't want, I don't want my bank account. I mean, my stock, my, uh, my uh, trading account being rocked by acquiring a thousand shares of the SPY at $270 a share, right? I'd rather be in a position where, you know, I'm acquiring a $10, a $15. So uh, American Airlines is a play that we're looking at. We're gonna talk more about that today. Americans, uh, all time low. Uh, Weight Watchers, uh, a carnival. So we look at all of these every single day. Uh, our group and Dan and I are sifting through these bargain basement opportunities. And this particular strategy that I just showed you is for long-term investing where, you know, let me, so, so that question of, should I buy now? Should I buy the dip? You don't even have to ask that anymore. All you need to do is go look at the chart and say, look, American Airlines isn't going to go to zero. But based on what it did in the past 180 days, I know where that support level is. So I'd be comfortable with getting in on American close to that support level instead of where it is today, because I'm anticipating that we're going to see another dip. And guess what? We're seeing another dip today. So forget about should I, should I stay or should I go, should I buy or should I, whatever. Instead of, instead of singing that tune, it's 
where would I be comfortable buying this? I'd be comfortable buying the Gucci sneakers at $500. They're at $650 today. So I'm going to go to Gucci every week. And when I'm going to say, are they $500 yet? Are they $500 yet? No, they're not. That person at the door at Gucci says, thanks for shopping, Dawn. Here's, here's payment. Here's payment. And boy, that's fun. And that's what you can do with options. So take it away, Dan. Sure. And I, I'm going to talk more about this American Airlines play that we put on last week. Um, American Airlines is actually down 2% today. And the play is up $76, $79. So like not a ton, but I mean, you know, when you have a stock on a down day, have an options play on it, you're actually making money on it. That's always nice. So let me share my screen. We're going to talk about diagonals. 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 Equity diagonals present share. Boy, I'm so excited. I love all my Facebook Live people who are sticking with us, watching us, and um, we're so grateful. We we love doing this, and we we're we just want to see you profiting in a position where you're not worrying about your retirement. You're not, you know fearful about where this market's going. We're showing you that you can make money in any market. There's a ship coming in every day. And we're proving this. We're demonstrating this to you. So Dan, take it away. Yeah, we've given out, this is the seventh, I think, trade we've published. We're seven for seven, all profitable so far. So we gotta get a streak going. Seven for last, seven. Will that last forever? No, but <laughs> for now, seven for seven. Uh, so we're talking about uh, equity diagonals. So specifically, you know, every week, you know, I like to bring to you guys either a brand new trade. Like last week, I brought a brand new trade, and now we're going to like analyze that trade. You know, talk about why it's profitable. Talk about you know what the trade management looks like. A big part of options, which I love, is that you're not just long or short, right? Like with a stock, you can either buy a stock or sell a stock. You know, if you want to short a stock, you sell a stock, then you buy it back. But you really only have two levers that you can pull, right? With options, because of how they're dynamically priced, there's so much fun stuff you can do once you're already in a position. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about that because equity diagonals are one of those positions um, that you can really milk a lot of extra profit out of. So again, I'm gonna to talk to you about diagonal spreads. I'm gonna to talk to you about the Greeks that uh, impact them. And then I'm gonna talk about the American Airlines diagonal that we put on last week. Make sense? Same legal slide. I'm talking about trades. If I'm talking about trades, I've taken them. This is not a recommendation for you to take them. Trading involves risk, so on and so forth. Consult the financial professional. What is a diagonal? So a diagonal spread, and again, this, this uh, on the left here, We'll show you how to read. If you don't know how to read that, don't worry too much about it. We're, we'll talk about that in our Saturday session. But it's the, the visual representation of where the risk and reward is located on a price chart. The, the y-axis is profit and loss. The x-axis is underlying price of the stock. So that's just the shape of what a diagonal looks like. And what a diagonal spread is, it's a two-leg spread established by simultaneously entering into two options of the same type. So in our case, we use two call options. However, the call options are one, at different strike prices, and two, at different expiration dates. Now that sounds like a lot, but let's just look at it. Trust me, you'll, be, you'll understand this in a minute. So there's the real time, there's the real time debit spread. And this was on American Airlines, okay? Now I'm gonna to flip to it. Can you talk about American? Why why we're um, why we're interested in American Airlines for this sure. particular strategy? Sure. Sure. Let me just move. Now this is called a Fibonacci retracement. So there are levels, and you know the levels that we look at are zero, the one closer to twenty five percent. That's twenty three point six, fifty percent, and um, what is it? The seventy eight percent. Yeah, I mean, so there's seven levels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven major levels. Um, you know, the 38 and the 61, they're, they're still levels, they're just less 
pertinent typically. I left them on there in this one just because highlighting this turning point here that I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually I would have that off. I wouldn't have it off on. But point being, you know, last week American Airlines was sitting at about 10 when they put this play on, right? What this graph tells me is that it's very unlikely that we're going to fall very much further from here, if at all, right? And, you know, given the trajectory here, that we will either short term rise to 14 or 17.19, uh, right? Yeah, more, 17 more, looks more likely. Really yeah, like more likely 17.19 only because of how the price action looked on the way down. And guys, I know I'm talking really fast, but I've had a coffee already this morning. So, that's what <laughs> but uh, uh, the price action on the way down, you see how it just kind of blew, like the, there was no, it, what, can you see my mouse when I'm yeah. pointing? Mm -hmm. Okay. There was there was no um, hesitation blowing down on the way through this this zone, right? So that yeah, tells me that you know, yeah, it's almost like yes, it's on the Fibonacci, but because of how the price action was on the way through this zone, we're not really going to regard that as a likely turning point. Okay, but we're looking, we're more interested in this point up here. So the thought was, we think American Airlines is going to go to seventeen regardless of a bailout or not. If there's a bailout, we'll probably back up around 30. So what we want is to design a play that's profitable to the upside. So we do that by buying calls. So what we did was we bought some calls toward the end of the year, right? November calls. And they were fairly expensive, $3.40, right? We bought them at why that tell people why that is right so the further we go out the more expensive the call because we have exactly. more runway exactly so the options have a time component to them right there is a always an expiration date where your option ceases to exist right so the farther away that time period is the more inherently expensive it will be to enter an options position okay so what we're doing in this case is betting betting, I use air quotes, betting, betting that the price of American Airlines will be above 12 on or before the end of the year. So I think that's a pretty safe bet. And the higher that it goes above 12, the more profit we're going to make. But what if there was a way where we could recoup some of this cost along the way? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So play in the diagonal is that you will buy the closer strike, 12, and then you'll sell the 15, which is further away. And you see here, we recouped 85 cents. So $85 per contract, right? 30 contracts, I'll get adds up. So where's the profit? So we're profitable to the upside indefinitely, right? I mean, no matter how high this goes, like the higher, the better. But what we're gonna keep doing along the way is that every time we get close to our expiry for our short strike in May, and so you know, May, it's May, say it's May 10th or May 12th, and we're sitting at 14 or something like that on American Airlines. Well, we'll exit the May and then we'll sell the June position. Yeah. We'll keep the November though, and then we'll so sell the, the July. Key, the key is it's expensive to wait until November Based on our, our analysis, there's a high probability, this is just our feeling, this is just the move we're making, we're not recommending that you do it, but we, Dan and I, are okay with believing that American Airlines will be over 12 by November. You know, hopefully we'll be getting on planes and visiting our relatives during Thanksgiving and Christmas. So every single month, we're offsetting the high cost of waiting until November through selling Selling. Selling against it. We're ratcheting down our cost basis every month. Um, and look, and if price jumps up earlier, say price jumps up to 20 on, you know, May 8th. Okay, we'll take our $5,565 and we'll close the whole position and, you know, we'll clean our hands. Fine, we're done. We're out for it. It's a winner. Right, so it doesn't mean we have to wait to November to cash in. Here's a perfect example. At May 16th, if 
American goes to 20 on May 16th, we've made $5,500. And you're, how much are you tying up with, with those contracts? 30 times? 7,600. Right. So making $5,500, let me do the quick math on that. Okay. $5,500 in one month over 7,000 what? Uh, 7,650. And 50? Right. That's a 72% rate of return in one month on a company that we all know and love. Right? Now, this I, is I, I would classify this as a very low risk one. Like it's a very low risk. It, for the amount of return that you're getting on a play like this, uh, I'm not, you know what I mean? It, it's, this is a very good looking trade to me. Yeah, I'm adding more to this, by the way, today. Um, it's <laughs> yeah, perfect data. Even like, right now, it's up. Here, I'll go back to my slides. Um, so this is, this is the construction of it, right? Uh, we'll send this out. But Yeah, and this is something that we're going to go through step by step. You're going to ask questions when you join us for our options one-on-one -on -one summit on April 25th. That is purely all complimentary, no pitches, all learning, no upselling. So we really hope you choose to join us. Uh, and we're going to go through this bit by bit. Yeah, just like an update on the position from last week, right? Last week, we modeled this out as a calendar. We decided to change it to a diagonal. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. But the bottom line is, you know, in a week, we're up almost 7%. You can see at the bottom. What's my, yeah. once that slide picture goes away. Sub 6.99% right now. So, I mean, you know, imagine you did 6.99% a week for 50 weeks, right? That's, a, that's, that's fantastic. And, you know, you can scale this up or down. Right? You got a million dollar account, scale it up, right? You got a $20,000 account, scale it down. This was built around, uh, probably could have actually done more than this, but this is, you know, we started trading this dummy account uh, a month ago tomorrow, right? We only ever tied up about, started with 200,000 in it. We only ever tied up, I think, like less than a quarter of the account. We're up 15 grand on it. Like in, a, in one in month. A, yeah, not, not even a couple months, in, a, in less than a month. March 16th, I think was the first trade. So we opened up this dummy account and this dummy account is going to be the record for everything that we've been doing. Um, we're putting all of our trades in here and the winners, the losers, and we wanna show you that there is there's a breadcrumb, a, a popcorn trail here that it shows profitability in a market that is completely uncertain and unstable right now. You can see here, like the buying power you currently have is uh, What was the else? date again? I'd love to mark my calendar, Andre says. Uh, I'm, Andre, I'm going to uh, give you the link in uh, pretty soon here and it's gonna be in the Facebook group. I will put the link so you could sign up. The date is Saturday. April 25th, and we're going from 10 a.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern on Zoom. And some people will say like, wow, I don't, a day. Let me tell you, the day is gonna fly by and you're gonna be so grateful that you gave yourself the gift of doing all of this in a day because you're going to get accelerated learning. There's no better way to learn than immersion. Wouldn't you agree with me, Dan? Immersion. Yeah, it, it, you really, crystallize the concepts when you stay in them for a day versus an hour, right? Um, if you can just focus your attention, you know, phones off, heads down and focus on this, you're, it comes together. Yes, and we're dedicated. We're gonna be holding your hand, making sure you understand this, putting you in breakout groups so you can learn from your peers. And at the end of the session, we're gonna, we're going to add you to our family, our friend family, and we will have a Facebook group for those of you who just showed up for the complimentary uh, because we believe in this so much. And uh, certainly, you know, there are things that you can do with us where we'll coach with you either through our paid mastermind or one on one with Dan. Uh, and I do a lot around uh, mindset and helping people emerge and, and break through, you know, alibis and things that have been holding them back. So we're a great one to punch and we, we really care about people learning this. Andre gave us a praise sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. That's so sweet. Okay. I, 
I'm hand it back to you, Dan. All right, back to the back to the nit, the nitty gritty. Um, so every time I put one of these new plays on, right? You guys can see here, delta, gamma, theta, vega. Those are the Greeks. Okay. There's, as I was saying earlier, there's different components that factor into how an option is priced. Okay. Delta, direction of movement. Delta direction. D Delta direction. D direction. Delta gone. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, looking at just the middle column here, right? Current price is 11.74, or at least it was when I took the screenshot, right? We're delta positive. We want price to go up, right? And see how price going up goes toward the peak. That's good. Gamma, acceleration of delta. I'm going to leave that one on the side for now. Yeah, that's negative, the most difficult one, I think, yeah, to understand. Yeah, gamma is, uh, is a component the closer you get to expiry. As of right now, it's not a major factor, but it's, it's essentially the slope of this purple curve. Uh, we'll talk about that in more detail. Theta, time value, T for time. All else being equal, how much money do you make on this play today? So in this case, $58. If nothing happens, if the price just stays exactly where it is. Volatility nothing stays happens exactly today, where it is. I've made $58. Everything stays exactly where it is, $58. Vega, volatility, the impact of a one percentage increase in vol not volume, volatility, it's over here, I can't see it, of the play. Not volume, this is volume. Um, moving onward, I, I mean, every, every time I put a play on, I, I show you like what, see these plus signs here? Every play is different, right? The Greeks are different for every different play you put on, right? In this case, we're positive delta, positive theta, and very positive vega, two pluses. So Meaning positive volatility means we're seeing a whole lot of swinging going on. So, um, you know, the VIX is up three points today. The, the VIX is the volatility index. And, you know, if you want to um, share, wait, no, no, no. I was looking at the VXX. Where is my VIX? Boop, boop, boop. Four. We're at 42 on the VIX today, close to 42. And again, like this is the under the volatility of the actual option, but is a good barometer for that is the VIX, is the like overall volatility of the market or of the S&P 500. Now I'm going to call an audible here right now because I feel like it's it's pertinent, uh, and I want to talk about. So I'm not done yet. What's going on here? Uh, do you need to show another screen? Yeah. I see there. it. Sorry I saw I saw your call thingy go up there. Yeah. Uh, you had it. It's because the Zoom box. There you go. Wait. There we go. What I want to show is Vic Central. Okay. Vic Central. I see it. Mm -hmm. so this is a, a great you know indicator that I use. This is something that I think all options traders should have pinned to their you know home screen of their computer. This is the VIX futures term structure. Now, what the heck does that mean? That means that, well, let's talk about a normal market. Before we look at, like, this is a, a market that is, is what's called in backwardation, okay? That means that volatility is higher now, right, 41.53, than it is in May, 36, than it is in June, 34, than it is in July, and so forth and so forth. Fundamentally, options should be more volatile the further out into time. Price should, like if I said, okay, do you think prices will swing more between now and May or between now and September? Like logically, you would think that prices would swing more between now and September than they would between now and May. Yeah, because I have more of a runway, right? I have more of a I, runway. More time, right, exactly. And so how, what this slope usually looks like is upward sloping, right? Like a normal curve here is like upward sloping, you know, and then the last month on this is usually around like 22 or 23 on the VIX. Um, and when you see a downward sloping uh, curve like this, what it means is the markets are in backwardation. They're more volatile short term than long term. 
So more volatile, backwardation, more volatile short term than long term, which is unnatural. Yes, yeah, not normal. It's like this probably two percent, two to three percent of the time. Um, now, if we're going to sell an option. Wouldn't it make sense in this circumstance to sell an option here? Say this is the, think of this as maybe just the conceptually right now, it's the price of the option. So let's, it, it, short term, we can sell something at 36 and buy it back in, December, in November at 29 for a volatility rating. Yes. And this is what makes this American Airlines trade so appealing, right? We're selling the short-term one, where volatility is very high, we're buying the long-term one, volatility is much lower. And even though this you know, looks like a big difference, like, oh, this was 340 and this one was only 85 cents. Realistically, like normally, this should be like twice to three times this expensive to put on. But it's not because of the current market conditions, right? And these are the type of things that we're gonna analyze and break down day to day, week to week, you know, we spent a good think, hour on this, I don't know, two Mondays ago. When we were, um, yeah, when we were with our, with our class, um, Britt was with us. We, we went into this in great detail. So we're, we're just real people making real profits and we want to create a tribe to trade with. How about that one? A tribe to trade with. Sure. That's what we want to do. We want to create a tribe to trade with. And we're offering, you know, the mastermind seat at such a low rate. It's $197 a month. You'd be crazy not to be in our family, our little tribe of traders. Uh, with that said, we want to do this Saturday complimentary no pitch summit. So you can build your foundation and you can go out into the world whether you choose to learn more or trade with us or not, we feel our contribution in this time of uncertainty is getting more and more people financially literate, specifically around the leveraged asset class of options because it is so relevant for what's going on in the market today and it's fun. And I'm all about freedom and options, like options in my life and you can make money in any market. So learn now, learn now. So when we emerge from what's happening here, you can be in a position where you take a new role in your financial planning. You take a new role in how you're creating an additional stream of cash flow. So you have that plan B. Who knows what your job's gonna be like after this pandemic, right? Who knows? There's so many people on unemployment right now who, who may be on, on unemployment for a while. So take out that fear and release that worry. Learn a new skill with us and step into your magnitude. And it feels so awesome knowing that you can make money every, every single day. A new ship comes in. That's the way I look at it. So those of you who are with us on our live Facebook and uh, those of you who are with us in the chat group here, I'd, I'd love for you to share in the chat group how this particular session is. And we have, we have a whole playlist in YouTube of these past sessions that we've done. We're, we're going to be creating online courses so you can review that you saw at a little can review this. So we're, we're making sure that um, we're encapsulating this wisdom. And I'm always so energized and inspired when, when I'm with you, Dan. And, and I love the people who are stepping up in our tribe of traders. I love you, Brett. You're, you're our charter, you're our, you know, charter member of the trip. I love you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. So yeah, so this is what we do on a weekly basis. Uh, this is what our mastermind's all about. We give you immediate trade ideas uh, above and beyond what Dan and I show you here on the Wednesday. And we do a Monday roll up your sleeves learning intensive. You know, we have an hour that we set aside. Sometimes it's an hour and a half. We just make sure that you, our tribe, who, who's with us for a, a, a low price level of $197 a month, 
can get a lot out of that particular session that you gain the confidence to put on the trades like you put on Brit, and you open up that um, paper account in Thinkorswim. And when you get to the point where you're feeling super, super confident, maybe you start buying one contract, right? And you slowly dip your toe into profiting uh, with real money. And then we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring at reduced rates. Uh, both uh, Dan and I, you know, come at this from different angles. Dan is the uh, technical trading uh, end of what we're doing here. I'm uh, the bridge to where you are, to where you ne need to get with Dan in terms of mindset and really believing that you can do this. And we have a lot of online courses that you can tap into that are going to help you with mindset. In fact, I did a full day session last Saturday, Dan, called Infinite Possibilities that help people uh, uh, implement the, uh, the wisdom of think and grow rich, right? Which is truly believing that this is possible. I think the number one thing that keeps people from moving forward is believing that they can do it. And whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right, okay? That's what, <laughs> Our dear, um, ooh, our, uh, I, I wanted to, there we go. That's what um, Henry Ford had to say. So here are the details for the summit, for the complimentary Options 101 virtual summit. It's all for you, no pitching, no selling. Don't feel like you're gonna get on this and you're gonna be, you know, this is for you to ask questions. We're going to have you, we're going to introduce you to other people who are on the call. You're going to be in breakout groups. You're going to, we're going to program your DNA, right? Through doing particular exercises that are going to have you walk away with this knowledge. It's going to become second nature for you to understand what's a put, what's a put, what's a call. Um, we have some people in our chat. Let's see. Uh, oh, Dan just placed in the chat the uh, the link to sign up for this. Um, yes, I will copy. place it. Yeah, so you can copy it. You can click on it. You can. So those of you who are on the call today, Britt, make sure you click on this and just sign up for it. And, and you're going to get an email with the Zoom group uh, to come into. Uh, those of you who are watching on Facebook, I will put this link in the Facebook. Ken, yay! Love it. You two are putting together exactly what I need to get into this. Thank you. Yeah, this is no slick. Yeah, for one, is, for one thing, Don, we're not slick. <laughs> we're, we're, we just want to meet awesome people who want to improve their skill set. I'll be there on the 25th. I'm so happy, Ken. So we're going to show you uh, real people making real profits. So the days of trusting others to grow and manage your accounts are over for those of us who want to take control of our financial destiny, okay? If you have a virtual, if you have a mutual fund, oh my gosh, we're gonna, we'll talk to you about the, the perils and the pain of mutual funds. But we want for you to spend a day with us and learn how to grow and protect your long-term investments in all markets in this crazy volatile, whatever we have here, I don't know what you want to call it, to, you know, what we saw between 2009 and February 19, 2020, sideways markets. Oh my gosh, sideways markets are excellent for iron condors. Um, and we'll talk to you about what an iron condor is, right? Yeah, and you know, just to that point, like the things that Don and I were doing two years ago don't work now. They don't work. Right. The things that I was doing a year before that don't work now. Calendars, okay. right, are not yeah, working yeah. right now. Yeah, like the short term, the short, yeah, like the, what we were, we were breaking in cash, right, doing that for, for months, right? And, and so the point is, you need to have adaptive strategies. Strategies and options need, realistically, need to change often. Depending um, on the market, yeah. Because markets change, right? We, who thought we would see a market like this right now? Like, come on. Um, here we are. So we're adapting. We're making money no matter what happens. Right? Yeah, that's, that's the just of it. And we want to create a tribe of traders who um, learn from the mistakes <laughs> we've made, <laughs> right? Learn from the mistakes we've made. I'll tell you a story about one Saturday morning where I woke up and I had how many shares? 3,000 3, shares of the SPY in my account. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it was a very scary morning. So we're going to show you, you know, the mistakes we've made um, uh, and, uh, and, and just get confidence around everything here. You know, Andre is asking, would you recommend leaving uh, a USB bank advisor for more hands-on platform for Thinkorswim or Robinhood? I would just say this, get financially literate, open up a paper account, learn what it is that we're doing, and then you can slowly dip your toe into all of this. I will never recommend that you leave your financial advisor cold. In fact, it took me a while in this process until I pulled off the Band-Aid and said, I am 100% managing my own money and I am creating an income flow, right? It, it took a while. So just do yourself a favor and get, 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 Get this plan B set up for yourself. So, uh, so then you could stop paying somebody $10,000, $20,000 a year. You know, if you have a million dollars with an advisor, many people are paying $20,000 a year for somebody to look at their account one hour each quarter, right? That's a pretty good gig. I'd like to make $20,000 a year for four hours of work, right? So we want for you to, in this summit, Learn how to grow and protect your long-term investments in all markets. How to turn up your rate of return in your portfolio through option strategies. And we do this, we talk about covered call strategies, right? We talk about getting paid to go shopping. We talk about putting on iron condors, right? With a portion of that money. And then we're gonna show you what we do every month. Britt, why don't you tell people here what your plan, what your trading plan is you know, in the, in, from an income perspective, what was your desire when you first came to us? Well, my desire was initially to figure out a different stream of income um, because of the uncertainty of the times. And after about three hours of being involved, I decided that this is something that I want to do a little bit more full time and be able to have a little bit, a lot more freedom around my time that I want to spend doing other things and building a portfolio that I can live off of while doing this, if that makes sense. And my Zoom stock, if I was, if it wasn't simulated, it's almost at $5,000 right now in a week. So, in a week. yeah. So there's opportunity. I understand that there's opportunity. There are a couple there's of failure out there. I get that. But I'm learning in a way you guys have made it so easy for me to learn this that it I feel I'm I'm getting confident. I don't feel like I can go right now and say, "Oh, I'm going to put $100,000 in my no. account and and start playing around with it." But I do feel that I'm moving in that right direction for freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. So it's the hour. I'm about to jump on another call with one of our gurus that we get some amazing information from and share with you. So thanks for being with us. Uh, again, if you're with us on Facebook, I will place this link in the Facebook group. Um, I mean, in the Facebook uh, comments section. So you can join us on Saturday. Uh, the people who are with us on the webinar here today, Tian, if you want to just, uh, you, you place that in the, in the, yep. uh, in there. Chat. So Ken is joining us. Uh, I, I really hope that uh, we get to meet you and you'll get really get to know Dan and I over the day and you'll see that we're just real people like you looking for real profit. So thank you for your attention. I am just bowled over by, you know, I'm seeing people watching this uh, this live stream right now on Facebook who I went to grammar school with grammar school who knew me when I was 10 years old I'm serious <laughs> and you know who you are right I'm, I'm looking I don't want to say his name but he went to grammar school with me so it's just amazing um, the beauty of online and how we can reach people I, I am I am so overwhelmed and gra gra grateful gratitude rimming over so have a great rest of the day we'll see you next week but we will see you on the 25th can't wait. Can't wait. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.